As we exit the month of April, it marks a milestone of sorts for PlayStation 5 gamers. We have as a collective muddled through the tricky period with little to no games that I could truly consider AAA next gen titles. Cyberpunk, Miles Morales, Demon's Souls and Hitman 3 have plugged a gap of sorts. However, with the release of the much anticipated PlayStation exclusive Returnal, we have been promised a game that can stake a claim as the first game worth calling a next gen showstopper. Returnal from the outside looking in seems like an art house project which is pristine, meticulously crafted and in a way almost too delicate to play. However, after clocking in a total runtime of 18 hours, I've now come to realise that whilst Returnal is both unforgiving and brutal, it's very addictive and extremely fun to play. Let's begin with the peaks before we visit its valleys, because believe me Returnal has an abundance of both. The thing that will immediately leave the player in a state of awe with the jaw dropping is the world in which you will inhabit. The story will see you take control of Celine Vesos, a woman who has been unfortunate enough to crash land on the brutal and hostile planet of Atropos. This alien planet is beautifully rendered with each biome offering up a unique look and enemies. The goal is simple, survive and get off the hostile rock as fast as you can. Then the game makes a tangible effort to connect the dots and provide contextual exposition for the time loop it is about to throw you into. The storyline focuses on a strange signal causing these paranormal shifts in time and space. You might think that this game takes inspiration from games such as Control or Death Stranding to present this bizarre concept and I suppose it does. However, the cynic in me believes that this was merely a way of crowbarring in a roguelike gameplay style, though I can't complain too much as it's pretty seamless when all is said and done. As you wander through the vast deserts and snow biomes, you'll begin to uncover the planet's secrets, secrets which have a clear impact on your life and death. The main theme of the game from here on out is rather unfocused. The game can't really decide what it wants to be. It has aspects of Control's mysterious sci-fi themes. It also tries to be an unnerving first person horror akin to PT or Outlast. Then of course it tries to cash in on the success of super giant games Hades, a roguelike game that made people grow fond of a rather underwhelming genre. The game is also heavily inspired by cinema and you'll find numerous references to the extraterrestrial genre. I admit that these are great inspirations to have. However, at times Returnal seems a bit lost and struggles to provide its own unique personality and style. Moving on to the core gameplay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This game is brutal and loves to punish any player that doesn't respect its harsh and unforgiving nature. Returnal places you in this expansive and dangerous environment that is completely procedurally generated, then asks the player to explore find clues and diaries from past time loops and try to understand the terrifying planet you find yourself trapped on. So, if the player makes the mistake of walking blindly into the fray, you'll find zero joy from this game. One of my biggest issues with the game in its current state is the lack of any checkpoints. You could literally spend hours like I did and reach the final stages of the game only to die and return back to Celine's ship. The expectation here is that people would do better in every play, scavenging supplies and completing side quests to gain better gear. However, resources are scarce and the game does nothing to teach the player of their importance, punishing them for a mistake they were destined to make. Another issue I have with the lack of a checkpoint system is that the game crashes. Returnal has seen a number of bugs since launch and the day one patch has mitigated a few but not all. During two of my runs I've had game crashes which in all honesty is unacceptable and further emphasises the need for a checkpoint or save system of sorts. But it's not all doom and gloom, let's talk combat. Returnal rewards players that exercise caution, that respect the terrors that this world has to offer and the players that use their resources wisely. Both combat and mobility are rather straightforward. You'll start off with jumps and dashes and eventually unlock the grapple gun letting you soar to new heights during gunfights. Speaking of gunfights, Celine has access to 10 weapons in total. Each of these weapons when used increases your proficiency levels, allowing you to unlock more powerful variants of the same weapon. Taking a page out of Gears of War, weapons can quickly overheat or overload. Players can then time an instant reload with the tap of a button. Finally, you will end up unlocking a blade which Celine can use as her primary melee attack. I should also note that destruction is a highlight in Returnal, as players can maneuver behind pillars and objects during enemy fire. Enemy variety varies biome to biome, and you'll find more deadlier foes will require some change in approach and tactics. Although I found the majority of my battles could be won when picking off enemies at range. Overall the combat is fast and fluid requiring you to utilise every weapon in your arsenal and be on the move at all times. 
The game also offers up some challenges and puzzles which at first glance may seem difficult, but in reality require good reactions and timing. Before moving on to visuals, it's worth talking about fast travel and the game's magnificent use of the DualSense controller. Fast travel points can be unlocked as you progress through a biome allowing you to travel to and from other checkpoints. It's done quite seamlessly and you'll find zero loading screens during your playthrough. The haptic feedback and adaptive triggers in the DualSense are utilised to perfection in Returnal. From the moment the game begins, you will find yourself navigating your ship through asteroids to which you can feel every rock pass you by. Every drop of rain, every dash and jump can be felt. It's surreal and extremely immersive. This game ebbs hard in areas that sadly take up a lot of your playtime. However, when the game flows, it's a gusher. The points of interest are the 3D audio, the haptic feedback and the HDR capabilities that all culminate to offer a game that is a visual and auditory spectacle. For starters, the game runs at a locked 4K 60fps and considering the sheer number of enemies on screen at any given time, combined with the destructive environments, this is extremely impressive. Then there's the environmental design, each biome offering up its own weather conditions, terrain and overall aesthetic. The HDR presentation is also astounding and complements each biome perfectly. Darker, more moody biomes such as the overgrown ruins look fantastic on my OLED television, offering up deep blacks and stunning contrast. Other biomes such as the Crimson Waste really show off the highlights. These presentational aspects keep the player motivated to grind through the slower parts of this game and I have to say I'm glad they do. For you see, this game might not be a holistic masterpiece. If I was talking about moments alone, this game would be on top of the pile. The boss battles within this game are where the visual, auditory, combat and thematic genius combine to offer some of the most intense, difficult and gripping gaming moments I have ever witnessed on console. Eventually the screen is filled with a beautiful fireworks display, with particle effects tearing across your screen. It's the bullet hell bless that I have seen in titles like Resogun or Cuphead that equally enthralled and frustrated me to no end and I absolutely adore this aspect of Returnal. I only wish that more of this content was available for the moments in between. Before moving on to audio, it's worth knowing the ray tracing implementation which the game is advertised to include is practically non-existent. What I mean by that is that we're not seeing the usual implementation of ray trace reflections. Instead, ray tracing support is baked in at the development level. Audio design is great, with Returnal being one of the first games to implement 3D audio, essentially breaking down sound by direction and height. It works really well, but I wouldn't say it's a game changer in any way, having used spatial sound profiles like Windows Sonic and Dolby Atmos in the past. The soundtrack renders beautifully with a bristling, malevolent soundscape that pairs perfectly with the weaponized planet and its tenacious inhabitants. Arguably, thanks to the incredible cinematic qualities of this game, alongside the twisted narrative and spooky atmosphere, Returnal can sometimes reach its peaks when the player is simply an observer. A trait that doesn't exactly lend itself to creating a great interactive experience. However, as an artistic showpiece, you can't fault this game. Overall, Returnal is a game that survives purely on high production value and moments of pure gaming bliss. The sad truth of the matter though is that it's a slog to get from moment to moment. The game is artificially difficult, the game never holds your hand or so as much as nudges you in the right direction. Plus, the combat, narrative and exploration are not refined enough to hold a player's attention long term. Which considering this is a roguelike game that is designed in a pick up and play style, that's a pretty damning statement. Having said that, I really enjoyed Returnal. As a huge sci-fi nerd, the game, its story and its setting appeal to me in almost every way. Add in the fluid 60fps combat and you have the makings of a great game. Yes, Returnal is a grind, but it is a grind worth doing to witness the moments of intense high octane action in between the mundane. It's a test of your endurance and I'm happy to say I endured. It was perhaps a little premature to label this as the first true next gen game. However, in the moments of bliss found in this title, I've learnt one thing. Next Gen is here and it's here to stay. Hey guys, Saiyan Prince here and I hope you enjoyed that review. Becoming a full time content creator is my dream and I'm so close to making that my reality. So if you're watching this video then do me a huge favour and hit that like button down below, comment your thoughts and of course subscribe. It would mean the world to me and I'll catch you all on the next video.